and good day everyone. Today's date is March 7th, 2023 and it's Tuesday evening as I record this video. Today's I'm going to talk a little bit about something different that's been bothering me and well I shouldn't say bothering me but just on my mind for quite a while and it's about basically and in the times that we're in right now I want to talk about corporations and corporate greed and in other words what I want to put this about video is about the saying people before profits common sense before dollars and cents so how does this oh I will explain what I mean by people before profits as many of you see companies making big huge profits um, food prices primarily and other services and like long health care, long-term care, retirement, nursing homes, etc. You've got these people making huge profits while their quality of care is not the best and their food prices are soaring and in other places too and for products and services too that are being charged higher than necessary while companies are making huge profits. So my thing is this why is this the happening? Why are so many core, why are so many executives and CEOs justify making huge profits? So if a company makes money, they're providing a service and at a reasonable rate, at a sustainable, because you know companies have businesses and such have to make money to pay their expenses and everything, like anyone does. And they want to have some, make a little bit of money on the side. Nothing wrong with that. The problem is when they overcharge something and they don't put it back in to keep the uh, costs down. Like grocery stores especially, you know, food prices are going up saying, oh, supply chain issues and other varying issues. And so, and while these CEOs are making lots of money, making huge profits, now, another area that's, I think a lot of people here in Canada, especially, we have limited competition in the telecommunication industry. We have three main tele uh, telecom companies that are profiting because there's very little internet competition and even some of these small companies are owned by the bigger corporations and they're being sw and those are not are gradually being swallowed up, being bought up. And you see that a lot of businesses and all that their big companies are buying them up and there are fewer and fewer companies because they've consolidated into large companies. So they're profiting. Now when I say they're putting we should be going people before profits that's apparently they're putting profits first because they're making the money and in our bottom line and what they should be doing is going the other way stay you know, let worry less about profits make enough that you can sustain that you're sustainable and it may make able to and you can invest some nothing wrong with having some as I say however stop gouging people and then when they cut here lay stuff lay staff off and and our services you know they're charging extra for these services left or charging this fees and that fee and for all these services which they didn't used to be charged. I remember 25, 30 years ago we were paying but not like we are now and there are more fees like they are now. So and I mean when you think about it um, companies like Netflix and other platforms that charge they got to pay huge licensing fees to content providers like movies and movies companies production you know they're, they're making you know they're making them tens of millions of dollars and they're paying a lot of money and people are paying into it now that's not a major th essential thing so that's not really a an issue however when you talk when you get into the pharmaceutical the healthcare industry um, essential services when they're privately run they are charging they're profiting from it so 
And how is that? We talk about capitalism. There's all this talk about capitalism. People are, anything they can do to make, any way to make money, they can. And it used to not be that way. It was not so prevalent. People want to make money. I get that. But when they overcharge for things that they don't need to and they're compromising or they have cheap, you know, they have cheap quality stuff, knockoff quality or they cheaper things for a hefty price. Um, my apologies, I don't want to make this too long, but my point being that it should be people before profits. Corporations should put the customers first, offer affordable rates and services for the various things because actually it would improve, it would generate more so the reduced costs would actually, I think would people would be more likely to use these services or buy these products because they're more affordable. Even products, another department is the accessibility, like um, because of being totally blind and low vision and a lot of us and for other di disabilities too, the the devices to help us out are so expensive. For what? And you can't, and if, unless government subsidizes them, they're just unaffordable for us. A lot of us, like even like our computer equipment, it's not a huge thing, but the screen reader, a lot of blind people use, for example, JAWS, which are job access with speech. That one's about over a thousand dollars. And now they've got it, you pay a subscription after a, after a couple updates, it runs out. And a lot of them, like even <clears throat> Microsoft charging for their office and a lot of more like things you bought them once you had them. Now you have to pay for it every year, a subscription based service. And whereas office, like before when you bought an office product, you had it and okay, you paid for the updates if you wanted to, but it still worked. And now it's more, you're tied to a subscription. Music services, before you went and bought the CD or cassette or back in the day cassette or vinyl LP records, you bought it once and you had it until it wore out so bad you had to replace it. And then with cassettes, of course, they, they would break so you'd have to replace it or you had a friend that would give you a copy of it and you could copy with your double cassette deck. Well, when you had CDs came along, yeah, you could do that. You could um, copy them onto cassette for yourself and whatever or you were tired of it, you got rid of it. Okay, and then you had about 20 years ago when they went downloading music started to the, you know, the downloading services like iTunes and um, services like that where you downloaded the stuff you want. You paid 99 cents or $1.29 depending or you could buy 10 bucks for an, ad, an album. You, you bought it and downloaded it and that was it. You had it until you got rid of it or your drive crapped out or something like that. Now we have services like Spotify and Apple Music and Amazon and and um, so th those are the three main ones. So that's all well and good. You don't have to have any physical music, but you keep paying every month. You pay and you pay and you pay like say nine ninety nine a month or ten bucks say ten bucks a month. You're paying one hundred and twenty bucks a year for what? Just for to, to listen to it and you pay it and pay it every. You keep on paying and keep in. You know, and then when you stop paying, you then of course you don't have access to that stu to those tracks you have anymore. And that stuff, you know, it's not like and you know another thing is too we're paying. Like I for one like impartially to country music and stuff from the 1980s and 70s and stuff like that. So, I've got Spotify and I got Amazon right now as of as of time of this recording. That subject to change in the very near future I may get rid of deciding which one to get rid of but you know I'm paying for all this stuff you know there's a lot there's millions of songs on there and so how much of my subscription is going to that going to these artists that you know that that you don't like and it's for anybody it's the other way around somebody that wants to likes rap or heavy metal stuff why do they why, why should they pay you know for you know to money to go to country artists now, I don't know how the distribution works, but I'm just saying, like, if you spread it really thin, it may be like half a cent or if even that. But, you know, it's like you're buying for that. And Netflix, you know, before you bought a v you know, when you had the video, you bought your video on cassette or VHS or beta in the 19, if you're in the late, late 70s into the 1980s, you had VHS cassette tapes, these big things. And then 
through the 90s, then DVDs came out in the late 90s, which you then bought it once and again. You buy it once, you own it until you're tired of it or get rid of it or wears out or something like that. But now with Netflix, you're basically paying for that. And, you know, now they're really, you can't even share, a they've, you know, put a stop to password sharing and stuff like that. Like so many, it's getting more pricey and prices are going up and they're jacking up and up and up and up. So you're paying for that. And again, you don't have the physical item. Now, if you're in a, you're, at least you don't have where, you, where, where to put it. But again, are you paying for, you know, you should pay for what you want. And that's when you did pay for music before, whether it's music or movies or whatever, you paid for the medium that it was on and you paid, the artist got so much paid for that. But you paid, you know, they got, you know, and they were paid. And it was just a one-time deal. It didn't keep on and keep on and keep on going and going and going. I mean, I can imagine how much of a killing the people at the top make off of these. So where does common sense, and that's kind of in a way where, you know, common sense goes. And going back to the model of, like, health care or in the schools, education is, is another one where funding shortfall. Now, that's not so much profits, but it's... That's where the people, that's where the common sense before dollars and cents come in because boards, yes, they have to save money. They can't just spend willy nilly. I get that. But what about programs that they're cutting, like home ec, family studies programs, phys ed programs, outdoor education programs, and other programs, extracurricular, even supplies? You got to buy the pay for the supplies yourself because years ago schools did provide some of the stuff. I mean, you had to buy paper and your own pencils and stuff like that, but now it's you got to pay everything. You know, it's like more and more pay here, pay there, and just everywhere. It's just pay, pay, pay. So, and that's what I mean. They can work different if they just distribute the funding differently. And the funds, if they distribute, just, it's, you know, it's just, it, it should just be more of a common sense things should provide for stuff like for things now I personally went to a special school for blind and visually impaired people so a lot of the supplies were provided for us and um, I mean we had three hot meals and everything was good but now that now that has changed too they've really cut back there too again because of budget constraints and so that's where the dollars you know where dollars and cents were put before common sense. And it's just like providing stuff, you know, stop charging so much. And like so many of our services, like even our transportation services, we could be, you know, these could be low cost or free just by redistribute the funding and collection of services and taxes and stuff. It's just a matter of redistributing it. There really isn't a lot of you know, trying to raise here, and same with affordable housing, too, because there's not enough demand for it. There, you know, there's too much demand and not enough supply. Again, oh, it costs, we got to, you know, it's going to cost, and that's people, and some of these greedy-minded people, that cash-minded, capitalist-minded people, it's, oh, we, we got to make money off it, make something, get something in return for it, whether it's money or something, and... Because it's about the money. They want to rake in the money. They don't care about providing service, whether it's affordable affordable housing or something like that. And again, I want to make myself clear on that. If you're still watching, if you haven't lost focus and haven't stopped it by now, but if we, if we just put the funds where they're needed and just put everything, the money, everything where it's needed and not just put it in the pockets of executives and CEOs and then they put it offshore or they take it and go on a nice cruise and whatever they live the life of luxury at the expense of people who they're suffering. So I say this, it's time to put people before profits, common sense before dollars and cents. So that is my message and Thanks for watching. Have a good day.